this is going to be totally different than what I've ever done before. I'm going to be a lawyer this morning making my case. Oh, I'm going to prove to you something. In other words, let me, let me start right here. Uh, Isaiah, this is not even part of it, but let me, let me give you this. Isaiah, let me see. I've got it marked. 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Okay. Can you read that to me? Wait a minute. Okay, stop. They that do what? Wait. What's that word wait mean? You have no idea. You have no idea. Doesn't mean, I mean, the translators put it in there totally, uh, totally wrong, I think. When it said, they that wait upon the Lord, what it's saying, they that gather unto the Lord shall renew their strength. They that gather, not wait, they that gather. The more you gather together, the stronger you become in God. That's what he's saying. You don't, you don't, you don't gather together with, with God's people, you're not going to be as strong. You're going to be weak. You will be weak. You can't, you can't stay away from church and, and, and maintain a strong Christian life. You can't do it. They that gather unto the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run. Do what? They shall walk and not. You ever sing that song? You didn't know it was a song, did you? Huh? Go for it, Brother George. Sing it. You don't know it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> My guitar's on ice. <laughs> All right. I have a case this morning I want to I want to bring to you. I think many times we've used it in the wrong sense. We've, and really not lean, lean on it the way we need to. And uh, all right, I'll, I'm going to start right here. Ephesians 2.8, we're going to start right here. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself, it's a gift of God. Lest any man should boast, you can't boast about this. No. It's a gift of God. Okay. If I'm saved by grace, then something else had to happen. Okay. Romans, Romans 10 and 8. The word is nigh thee. The word is nigh thee. Where is it? It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if I will confess with thy mouth, believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. saved. Okay. If this took place, then you're saved, right? right. But the word, the word in here is one thing we got to look at. One word I want to look at through this whole thing, maybe this week and next week. That one word, believe. 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 A lot of people say, I believe. Well, if, if you really believe, there is no doubt in belief. That's right. You can't have any doubt no. when you believe. It has to be erased. See, sometimes we have to, see, uh, we have, I have to back up and level my faith out where my faith is and stay there until I get it built higher. Too many times you want to live on faith that you don't have. You can't believe that high. And so you're trying to, you said, well, I said it. That doesn't mean a thing. Listen, watch this. If thou wilt confess the Lord Jesus 
and believe, that's who you're saved. What happens if you confess and confess and confess and you don't believe? Nothing. What happens if you believe and don't confess? Nothing. There's two things that have to be working hand in hand, right? If I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. If I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart. If I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. Then those two things work together. You understand that? Something took place. Something took place that I got saved. So what happened when I got saved? Second Corinthians. Do you know that one? Second Corinthians. 517. If any man be in, he is a new creation. Creature, creation. The old things pass away. Oh, pass away. Behold, all things. What that what he's talking about there, he said, this is a brand new creation that's never existed before. That's in that's what that's inside you. Your spirit man is now has never been there before. God came in, got rid of the old, brought in the new. Him, Jesus Himself is there. Now, one thing we got to, you know, I can't go there yet. Huh? Okay, all right, all right. Well, just hang on. So if Jesus is in there, He's in here. That brand new creature that's never existed before. So there should be a difference in my life. Yes. I should think different. Yes. I should talk different. Yes. I should be really different because of him. Yes. Yes. But see, there's the level of faith. Because see, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing what? The okay, the word of God is full of faith. It is faith. Yes. That's where faith comes from. Come on. So if, I, if I'm taking the word of God and, and begin to speak the word of God, read the word of God, hear the word of God then faith cometh. Faith cometh. But it didn't say you get faith because some people don't receive faith. All they do is receive hope. No. Hope won't get you there. No. It'll prepare you for something, but it won't get you there. Right. Because the Bible says now faith is the substance yeah. of things hoped for, yeah. the evidence of things not yeah. seen. Okay. I have a new man inside me called the Lord, the Spirit of God, okay? Now, John chapter 4, I'm going to run through this real quick. John chapter 4 talks about God is a spirit. So they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, if God's a spirit, then he moved in me. Now I am a spirit. Got that? I'm a live spirit. I'm not a dead spirit. Everybody is a spirit. We know that. Spirit man. But it's no longer am I a dead spirit. I am a live spirit. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. I'm no longer dead to this world. But, but see, there's a level of faith I can begin to travel to. Level of faith. And let me, let me Brother Hagen put it this way. My wife, this is back Right after they was married, they had two children, and Aretha got sick, deathly sick. And she was going to die if she didn't have surgery. And so Brother Hagin was praying, praying, praying. Nothing got better. She said, I got to find out something. So he went to his wife and said, where is your faith at? I got to come down to where you're at. I want to level off where you're at. If I can come, if you and I can agree, because the Bible said if two or three agree upon any one thing, then I can take care of it for you. He, she said, if I would have surgery, I believe I would come out of it fine. He said, okay, I'm going to level myself down to where you're at, and you can have surgery, and you're going to come out of there really great. And so they did it. She came out great. And this is one of the things that, that I've had to do to myself. I've had two surgeries that I didn't want. I fought one of them, especially my, the first one is my knee. I fought that thing for years uh, to the very point. Every time I would walk, I'd almost cry because of so much pain. Finally, I said, why put up with this thing any longer? Take my faith, what I've got. I'm believing that in surgery, 
that I can come out of this thing better than I am right now. And so I went in and had it. Guess what? I came out better than I am at, was at the, the point. And the second one, two months ago today, I was in there again. New, new shoulder. I can do things now more than I could before I went in. That's why I've been two months. I believe that within, they tell me six months, it takes six months. I believe in six months I will be much greater than it was before I went in. You say, you didn't need that. I didn't, but I went to where my level of faith was. Quit fighting it and do it. See, if I had the level of faith to, to replace all that ligaments in there and all everything that was needed, I would have stayed there. But why stay somewhere where your faith isn't? You're a new person in Christ, okay? And so I began to see this. You know, I began to see this. The reason I drive in the truck I've got is because of my faith. A lot of people say, you don't need that much. Yes, I do. My faith, per- my faith claimed it. My faith produced it. My faith took it. My faith brought it in. Here's how it worked. Because, see, before I bought the car, before I had that, that truck, I thought about it, prayed about it, prayed about it, prayed about it, and the only thing I could get up was $20,000 faith. That's all I could get. As high as I could go. I couldn't see myself higher than that, buying anything higher than $20,000. So I so leveled off. And when I went to the, the car dealer, that car was $20,000. So I could think that, and I could buy that because I got $20,000 faith. So I bought it, and within 11 months, it was paid for. That's where my faith was. So I bought it. And I thought, you know, said, well, you know, every, people looked at me and said, you don't look good in that car. You need a truck. I said, I know it, but right now I got $20,000 faith. This was $20,000. That's, that's where I stopped it. $20,000. Look, you know, the car was good. Got me around good. Looked good. Nothing wrong with it. Didn't have no dents in it. Looked like a brand new car. But in November of last year, God said, go get the truck. Go get your truck. This is, your season of, of this car is over with. Your season's over with. And for a month, he kept saying, go get the truck. I said, no, go get the truck. No, go get the truck. No. He said, how come you keep saying no? I said, I, this is paid for. I like paid for. I like paid for. It's paid for. It's mine. No bank can come and say, I want my truck. I want my car. You, you know, you, you didn't make the payment. It's mine. He said, where's your faith at then? To hear me or to hear you? I thought, I'll go look. I went to, I went to Chichilla, got on, the, on the, the Chevy parking lot, walked that whole lot, looked at every truck out there. Not one person came to me to talk to me about their truck. Not one. Nobody came out. I said, apparently they don't want to sell nothing. So I got in my car and left. So I got out of there. And, and, it kept, and the Lord kept telling me. So like a couple, months, couple of weeks later, God says, you need to go get your truck. You need to go get your truck. You need to go. Go look. I said, okay. I went to Merced. I said, we're going to go to Merced. And either they deal my deal or this thing ain't going to cook. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, I'm going to, put, the, I'm going to put it to them. Because, it, see, it's my money they want. Mm-hmm. That's just my money they want. I want a truck, but it's my money. They want more than anything else. Yeah. And I knew that. So I went in there. I wasn't even hardly out of my car till a young lady come trotting out there where I was at. What do you want to see? I said, just one moment. Before we do anything, I want to tell you, I'm here to buy a truck. And I'll tell you what I want. I may be the hardest guy you ever work, work with, but I want to let you know one thing. I got the money, and I got the source to do it. And if you can't do it, I don't know what to tell you. I noticed she was on her phone. Pretty soon, a gentleman come walking out, and she left. She got out of there. He come out there. We showed me this and showed me this and and this and no, wrong color. No, this is wrong. No, that is wrong. No. Then we came past that one that I have out there now, that beautiful paid-for truck. Is it paid for yet? Not yet. 
but it's called paid for. That's what I call it. That's what I call it. It's a paid for. It's paid for. It's, paid, it's a paid for truck. And uh, we went inside to sit down to negotiate what we're going to do. We sit down and began to ask questions about me. I said, stop it right now. Hold it. He said, what? You tell me what you're going to do for me before I tell you what I can do for you. He looked at me sort of funny, jumped up and left. I thought, whoa, I have people keep leaving me. <laughs> Pretty soon, the manager came out <laughs> and sat down. And I said, you want to know about me. I want to know what you can do. What are you going to do for me? I'm here to buy. You have something you want to sell. We can make the great exchange. What are you going to do for me? He said, well, we need some name." I said, you're not getting anything until you, until you tell me what you're going to do. Then he began to tell me. I said, is that all you can do? He said, yes. I said, well, okay. The guys down the street will probably do more. He said, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's talk some more. I said, no, no, you talk, I listen. You tell me what you want to do. And we began to talk, we began to talk, we began to talk, we began to talk. I said, you ain't talking good enough. I want more money off. What are you talking about? We're not making no money now. I said, don't lie to me. Yeah. You wouldn't sell me something you're not making money on. Come on. Don't lie to me. I've been, I've been in business too long. Yeah. I've been out in this world too long to know some things. And so we sat there, and we sat there, and we sat there. And pretty soon he began to talk my language. Now, see, my faith is at 20,000. But this truck is 46,000. But my faith is at, four, at 20. What am I going to do about this? My faith is on 20. That's where I got it. They kept talking. They kept talking and kept talking, kept talking, kept talking. We kept talking. So this is what I'll do. I said, this is what I'll do. And when I drove out of the lot with that truck, guess how much I owed against it? $20,000. That's where my faith was. That's where my faith was. But I had to stay strong and inside there. Yeah. Because I had to tell them some things that they didn't want to hear. The young lady that was taking, taking all this, and, and see, they wanted, and I said, this is the interest, 2%, or we walk. Went through the whole thing. I'm not paying no 5%, 10%. I'm doing the dealing. See, I'm a Jew. I'm Jesus. I'm a Jew. <laughs> I'm doing the Jew and not them. They want my money. They only have one thing I want is a truck. They want all my money. And we began to talk. He said, we came back and said, I can get you down to 2.4. I said, okay, we're working. We're working. I can get you this much money here. I can take this much money off the truck. I can do this for you. And you only have to come up with this, this kind of money. I said, okay. All right. Then I said, when do, I when do you need the money? Within two weeks? I think it was two weeks. I forgot now what it was. When it was two I said, I have to shift things around to get the money in that, you, that I need to put down money itself. I have to shift around. And he said, okay, we got it. Let's go in and sit down. We sit down, and we sit at the desk, and we begin to ask, she began to ask the questions. We began to give her the information. And she said, now give me a check sign empty. I said, no. She said, what? No. I've already agreed with your manager that we don't do that. He said, I don't have to do that. You tell me you are. No, I don't trust you. I said it to her face. That's how, if you want to deal with me in business, you better know, you better come ready to, ready to deal. Because I, business, I know a little bit about. After 30 years, of, you know, 40 years of being in business, you know, I know how to talk a little bit. I put it this way, I know how to push my weight around. I said, no. You know what she did? <laughs> she jumped up and left. I thought, where was she going? <laughs> Everybody keeps leaving every time, you know, every time I put pressure upon it. What did she do? She went out, brought the manager in, and he walks in and said, you don't need the check. Forget it. You don't need that. You don't need it. I said, okay, continue. We continued. <laughs> but like I said, when we drove away from that place, I only owed 20000 on that truck because that's where my faith was. See, some of you are trying to pull things off with your faith that you don't have. Now, I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Okay, I was born by faith, again, by Jesus Christ. 
I was born again by faith. How? By believing in him, confessing with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, I am now saved. He came in here. Now, if any man be in Christ, this is in, I am not, my body is not. Your body will never be saved. Won't be. But too many of you people are living after the, the dictates of your body and not after the spirit. Yes. That's where the mistakes are at. Yes. That's, where, that's, where, that's where you blow it. Your body says something, you agree with it. Yep. You agree with it. Now, see, I, you know, I've had to go through this, you know. Two, two months ago, to, 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 in fact, it would be tomorrow, it would be like a Wednesday, tomorrow on the 25th. I sat there with my body hurting so much that it didn't, you know. So what I had to do was take, transform my mind from the hurt to the word. And begin to quote word inside me over and over and over and over and over. Because I know God the healer. Amen. And I spoke it and I talked it and I talked it to me. Talking inside. Till my spirit begins to hear it. My flesh begins to hear it. My soul begins to hear it. Faith begins to rise inside. And I only, I only had to be on pain pills for two days. After, after a big surgery, they cut that. In other words, they cut this thing open, cut the bones off. It's almost everything, but take the arm off. Then they sew it back together. And you, you know, and you're going to have pain more than two days. Not me. God, the healer, moved in. I want you to see this. Okay, if God's a healer, inside here. Now, think about this. The Bible says, from the abundance of the heart... What happens? The mouth speaks. What happens if all of a sudden I begin to curse? Where's that coming from? It can't come out of my spirit. It's perfect. It can't come out of there. You better know where it's coming from. When people begin to curse, you know, it's not coming out unless it's a dead spirit, you know. But people begin to curse. And people begin to doubt. People get into fear. Where's that coming from? That can't come out of my spirit. It's perfect. It's Christ. Let me ask you the question. Oh, yeah, it's coming out because the bones of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? If Jesus, the spirit, which he is, now moved in and I'm brand new, just like him, can Jesus, did Jesus ever cuss? Did he ever have doubt? Did he ever have this sickness? Did he, was there ever lack of money? Did it, well, well, okay, if that's him and he's in here, where is it coming from? It's not coming out of my spirit. No. Coming out of my soul, my will, my mind, and my emotions. Many times in the Bible it's, it's called heart. That's the heart of you, really. See, it's, it's the very thing that makes the decisions. It makes the decisions. People live in fear. They live in fear. But see, where you level yourself off is where, the only, where you can live. You can't live above the knowledge of the Word of God you have in you. You can't do it. Now let me touch on something, you know, that people don't like is your money. All right? It's money. People get lost. They get, they get all tied up. In, you go to church, they get tied up on money. But one thing, one thing you got to know, I don't study the records. I don't look at your records. I don't know what you've given. I don't know who gives or who don't give. It's okay. So I have a free mind to speak when God says speak. Okay? But see, sometimes people condemn people if they're not tithers. But where is their faith? See, if, if, if you don't have faith for it, then really what you're doing is above your faith and you can't do anything with it. Even though you got a lot of money, you don't have no faith for tithing. Yeah. You're not going to give to God. No. Why? You have, there's different things in there. Church has got plenty of money. They don't need mine. That ain't yours. If you didn't know it, that is not, don't belong to you. Because see, the Bible says, will a man rob God? But you have robbed me, he said. How did I rob you? From tithes? And in offerings. Then he said, you're cursed with a curse. See, God didn't curse you. No. 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 And I know the Bible says in, 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 in Galatians, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That is true. When I got saved, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed from it. 
But I can live there if I, want, if I choose to, though. I can go outside in the wintertime, and it's raining, and I can choose to get wet or to get an umbrella. I can choose now. Like last night, I wanted you comfortable this morning. Are you comfortable? Yeah. How, did you, how come? How come it's nice and comfortable in here? Well, the air conditioning didn't do it. No. Did the lights come on by themselves in here? Huh? No. The power's there, but someone's got to flip the switch. Who came down here last night at 6 o'clock and turned this thing on? To flip the switch. You didn't even know it, did you? You could care less who did it, just as long as I got it. As long as it's comfortable in here. You know, it doesn't matter. Just give me comfort. I knew that. So I came down here last night, and it was almost 100 degrees in this building. Yeah. Would you have been comfortable this morning at 100 degrees? Yes. Not a bit, huh? So what, see, here's what I'm saying this is, because I had faith in the unit that's up on top of here. If I turn the switch, it's going to work. So that's where my faith is. It's on that. And if I never turn the switch on, guess what won't work? That there, it was not going to work. So see, what I have to do then, I have to build my knowledge. See, I've had the knowledge of the, of the air conditions long enough to know if you turn them on, they're going to work. So I have to have the knowledge of faith. What will my faith do if I just turn it on? Where is the level of my faith where I can believe God? Where's it at? Where's it at? So I begin to have, so I'm going to see this. So I have, you know, part of my life in health, I have lived in good health. That just these two parts of my life that I wore them out in, in construction. I just wore them out. But other than that, uh, let me ask a question. Since you've been in our church now for, we've been around about 15 years with this church. How many services have I, huh? 18. How many services have I missed because I've been too sick to come? How many? Not a one. How come? That's my faith is. But see, when, when, when if, you, if you happen to miss because of, your, of, of, of something going on, see, don't condemn yourself. Just get your faith, get a little higher. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Just get it a little higher. Because now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith is substance. And I begin to see this. I begin to see this. Okay. If I'm in Christ, then he's in me, then I'm in him, then what's in me is what's heaven. See, Brother Angelo uh, almost got here this morning. He, made, he, he read this one here. What sort of things you bind on earth, bound in heaven. You know what it really was talking about? Whatever is bound in heaven, you can bind on earth. Whatever it is. If it's not bound there, you can't bind it here. Whatever's loose, then you can loosen it on earth. Okay. Is it healing loose in heaven? Yeah. Okay. Is poverty loose in heaven? No. But it's here, isn't it? It's here. So I can choose it or not. I choose prosperity. So I picked up this slogan, whatever, whatever comes out of my mouth, the day will come when I will become it. Yes. I will become it. If I can believe with, my, believe with my heart, speak with my mouth, I can get saved. If I can get saved and get God, then that, then that what was in the Word will work in everything else in my life. Yes. Because it's now it's just like Him. So I take that Word and begin to say this. Years ago, I'll never be broke another day of my life. I've given, therefore it's given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into my bosom. With what measure I meet or give, it's going to be given back to me. That's how I'm talking. That's what I'm saying. And it took a long time for this to begin to come to pipe the way I want it. Am I there yet? No. But I'm not going to quit. But let me show you what, what faith is. Here, I mean, belief is. Here's what belief is. To be consistent in your confession. To be consistent. Once I start something, see, here's people jump up and say things that they have no faith for. They have no faith for it. 
jump up and say it. There's no faith there. It's not going to produce anything. Because now faith is. Not now your words. Faith, feel, words, produce. So it has to have some faith in it. And also, to be trustworthy. What you're speaking, can you really trust yourself and to keep talking it? Can you trust yourself? You know, when the Bible says, when you stand pray and forgive, you know the hardest person to, for, to forgive? You. You know you. You know how many times you blow it. You know how many times you had to, you know, you did this or did that, the wrong things. It, then sometimes I said, I don't know if I can forgive myself or not for that one. But the Bible says when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive yourself for whatever happens. You're going to blow it. See, and David knew this when he, wrote from the, when, he, when he wrote from the hand of God, give it to him. He says, I know that you're just dust. When the wind comes up, dust goes everywhere. When the winds of adversity comes up onto you, sometimes you just blow every direction. You have no idea what, what to do next. You're just going all over the place. We, we go through things. We go through problems. We go through situations, our lives. But how you handle it in that death storm is how you're going to come out. Joseph went through the death storm of his life when he was stolen. You know, he was stolen from daddy, sold to the Ishmaelites, sold to Potiphar, put into prison. But all the time, the Bible said he was tested. How? His character was on the test block. See, when something happens, it's your character being tested. It's a word inside you being tested. The Bible says when you hear the word, Satan cometh immediately to take away the word that was sown in your heart. Why? Because the word left there long enough will produce what it's in. Whatever that word is will produce. It has the ability to, go, to be in your spirit and produce anything it is. Anything. And the next vehicle I buy, I believe in God that I'll pay cash for it no matter what it costs. Mm -hmm. See, my faith is already working there. And I'm going to pay this one off real quick. Within a couple months, I will be one year ahead on the, on the payments already. One year. And the interest is so low, it's a dollar a day. How, much, how, many, how many dollars is that every year? That's how much money I'm not paying them. Of the time I've, got, I've had the car, I've only had to pay, I think, about $150 to $180 of interest. I've had it so low that that's all I've had to pay. <clears throat> so see, what, so what God is saying, where is your faith? Where is it? Remember when J. Ivers come to Jesus? The little woman with an issue of blood? G, J. Ivers made this statement. Jesus, if you come, lay your hands on my daughter... She shall be healed, and she shall live. He turned around, headed home. Jesus was going with him. But a little woman with an issue of blood came by and stopped the whole procedure. Yes. She touched the hem of his garment. Because she said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, if I can get that close, that's all I need. If I can do that, that's all I need. If I can just touch it. And so she did. What, what happened? In a procedure, Jesus stopped and began to talk to her. The runner came and said, trouble the master no longer. Thy daughter is dead. What did Jesus say? It was too late now. There's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, she's dead. We didn't get to her in time. What did he say? First thing he said, fear not, first word, fear not. And the second one's only believe. Believe what? What you've already said. Don't change it. Don't change what you said. Because the circumstances change doesn't change your confession. See, we change our confession every time the circumstances change. We go with the circumstances. I can't do that because of this. Really? Jesus could have said, I'm sorry. Man, when death comes in, there ain't nothing I can do. You know, we're going to the next, we're going to the next. He said nothing. Why? Because Jairus' confession already put Jesus on the ropes. Put, put it this way, put him on the ropes. 
Because if you lay hands on my daughter, she shall be healed. The healing now was, she needs to, be, she needs to come back alive. Then she'll live. Jesus said, fear not, only believe. They turned and went. When Jesus got there, he spoke the words into her. Daughter, I say unto thee, arise. She rose up. Why? Because of the words that Jairus said, Jesus repeated them. Now, see, what, see, see, Jesus can only repeat the words you're speaking that's coming from heaven. It's the only thing he can repeat. He can't repeat. They're not going to make it, Lord. I'm sorry, Father, but we've done our best for them. What happens? They literally close their mouth. They will not speak that unbelief in heaven. Wouldn't do it. That's, where, that's why he said, if you bind it, it's already bound here. If you loose it, it's already loose here. I can release it upon heaven because of what you said. If you don't change what you're saying. Now, here's another, here's another one in here. Now, here's another one. Do, do everyone, how many people here has met Jesus personally, seen him? Have you met him? You've met him in the spirit? I know that. I'm talking about face to face. Have you seen him? Nobody? Are you sure? Nobody. Why would you serve a God that, you, that you've never seen? Has he proven himself to you somehow? Yes. Has he? Yes. One of the words is said in here, respect to the person that has said the word you're saying. Yes. Come on. I have respect of the words that Jesus has already said. By whose stripes ye are healed. I have respect of that. He said it, therefore I, I believe what he said. So I have respect there to the man that said it. I remember, you know. I've got to know Brother George pretty good and Brother Wayne since he's been here. Now, I can't yet, but give me th four more months. They're going to call me up and said, uh, you know, on a Sunday morning, they said, you know, tomorrow we have a tea time. You want to go? I said, what time do you want to pick me up? <laughs> what do you mean, do, you, do I want to go? Now, do I have respect to that? Are they going to really do it or not? <laughs> Can I respect that word from what I hear? Can I believe it? But I know these two guys because we're going to Don Pedro. Maybe. Or are we going to Diablo? Diablo, yeah. Diablo baby. Diablo. We're going to the big one. <laughs> Why? We're going to where there's no trees in our way. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to where, you know, that you can hit it as hard as you want to hit it, and it just goes and goes and goes. You're going to hit it. Just don't hit it crooked. Get you know, a lot of water, yeah. But hit it. Hit it. I have respect of the words that they said that we're going to do this. How much more respect of the words that Jesus has said can I believe in? Can I respect his words? That I can believe him. That I can take that word that he said and stick with it. When he said, my God shall supply how much? How much? Now there's a condition to this. Conditions. First off, I got to be a born again Believe in God, that he's my daddy. That Jesus would not say anything, that he won't back up. I got respect for that, right? So I got that respect. But also, one thing that I've got to know, that, I, that what I ask, I've already went to the Word of God and got faith on it. See, if I'm asking empty words out of no faith, then God can't hear it. Why? Because, because of Hebrews 11, 6. What does it say? Without? Faith. What? Faith. Without? Faith. Without faith, you can't do what? You can't please Him. So i got to come with Him with faith. If I'm going to fulfill this particular Scripture, my God supplies, i got to come with Him with His Word. See, Jeremiah says, bring me in remembrance of my Word. When you come to me, bring me some Word. Bring me some Word. Don't come empty-handed. Bring me what I've said and if you bring me what I said, then I know you've been in my word. See, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study 
to show thyself approval, work unto God, that needeth rightly, but needeth not to... Put it up there. I got one word out there. Steady to show thyself approval unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, I'm not ashamed to go to him and ask him. Why? Because I got the word on it. Yeah. I got the word on it. See, 1 John 5, what is it? 1 John 5, 14? That is, a, see, that's another one. Put it up there. For this is the confidence that I have in him. What's confidence? See, I know one thing. I, got, I, I know this. I got confidence in these two guys of golfing that uh, one thing I know I've got to do, if I'm going to do anything to stay up with these two boys, I got to play pretty good. They are better than I am. But one thing I got over them, I can get the ball further. <laughs> I know that. But what good is that on the scores cards? Not one thing. Brother George tells me, it's not how you drive, it's how you arrive. But to me, I could care less if I can beat you in one way, just one, just one way, just one way. I don't care. I will outdrive you somehow. And the surgery is not going to stop me. I'm going to even drive it further. That's what I've been saying. So guess what's going to happen? My arm's going to be more freer to move better. So look out. When? I could care less. Hit it far? Yes. Hit it long? Yes. Hit it straight? I'm pretty good at that because of him. Hit it pretty, I can do that. So confidence in something in my life. Confidence. I have confidence. I didn't have it before I met him. When I got up on the ball, I looked at it, and I wondered, where are you going to go this time when I hit you? I had no idea where it was going to go. But I do know one thing. It's going to go a long ways. Whatever direction, it doesn't matter. It's going to go. You know? It's going to go. So can, if I can have confidence in one thing, why can't I have it in God? That has never failed. That has never came to me and said, I'm sorry, I can't meet that need. I can't do it. The only thing he says, bring me word. Talk to me about my word. And bring me faith that the word is. If you bring me faith, because my spirit now... It's just identical to him. It has no doubt in it. It has no cuss in it. It has no death in it. It doesn't have that. It has no poverty in it. It has no sick in it. Only thing it is, it's just like him. That's what's inside me. So when I begin to see that. If my spirit is just like his spirit, the only thing lacking is that I, my words, in me, now has to line up to His words. My belief now has to line up to His belief. If I can do that, what sort of things you desire when you pray, believe you have them, and you got them. That's it. That's it. That's it. I have to erase all the excuses. All the excuses. Well, I can't do that. That excuse has to go out the window. No excuse when you come to God. And the last one, I think the last one I put on here, that uh, to believe, to believe, when you believe, there's never no doubt in it. None. Can't have any doubt in it. None. So if you do anything with doubt in it, stop, back up and say, okay, how far can I go until doubt begins to set in? You stay there and build yourself in your faith until you can take another step with faith. Then take another step with faith. And take another step with faith. Don't go past your faith. It's dangerous. You don't want to go there. Too many people, you know, and I, you know, I hear this on TV a lot. They get up there, they're raising money. If God says, if you'll send in $1,000, if you send in $500, if you send in this, God's going to do this for you. I would like to have a phone right in their ear and said, you are taking God's word and destroying people with it. You're taking God's word and destroying people. Because some people will take that and believe it and send in the last thing they've got and now they're broke and nothing's coming in. But they'll always give you the one 
that came out of it. Of all the thousands it gave, one may come out of it. Why? One had faith. One had faith. The reason I can do with my truck the way I'm doing, the reason I'm ahead in the payments, because I have $20,000 faith. I didn't go above it. Yeah, but it caught, no, 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 20000 Because when I got through talking, we were at 20000 That's where my faith is. So at 20, I can do exactly what God says I can do. This thing will be paid off before the due date on it. Will be. Way ahead of it. Why? Because that's where my faith is. See, you can't, you can't go above your faith. You can't live up there. You can't live up there. I want this. I want that. You've got to stop and go back and get your faith built up there. Get yourself where you can see yourself there doing that. Going there. This is in your life. See yourself there. If you never see yourself there, don't go there. Don't go there. You're destroying yourself. And what it does, it damages your faith and it takes you longer to believe God for the next step. So don't go there. I would encourage people. You know, I've had people come to me and, you know, and said, well, God told me to give this. I said, hold it. I want to make sure that God told you. I don't, I don't want it if, if you come up with this big idea. Don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want it. Why? Because I know if you give above your faith, it's going to hurt you. It's going to damage you. Don't do it. This church is going to survive no matter what. In fact, we're going to do better than survive. We shall thrive. And this church has never had to beg for money, and it never will beg for money, because money cometh to this church. I set this thing up. My wife and I, we started this church by giving everything we had away that came into the church. We set it up. God, we're going to do this. We had faith for it. Yes, we did. We had faith. The money that came in, we literally gave it all away. What did we do? Given it shall be given. We knew that. So we did that. We kept doing that. We kept doing that. And we kept doing it. And, and, the little, and the young kids that come here, that they can't believe that this church, the size we are, give them as much money as we give them. What happens? We're blessed. We're blessed. And when we remodel this building... How many times do we have to stop and say, you know, people, man, we can't go any further if you don't start giving. Not one time did I have to say that. Mine. Not one time. Why? Because we are blessed. Yes. We're blessed. Yes. I'm not going to stand up and say, you turkey, you don't give, therefore God's going to get you. <laughs> That's out. Man. You're blessed. Yeah, really Just get in the stream. Mm-hmm. If you're not in it, you know, get in the stream. Build your faith. If you can't do it yet, build your faith where you can. Yes. Build it. How do I build it? The Bible says building up yourself on your most, third, the third John, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Praying it. Praying it. Do you get yourself built up? Because see, if you try something and you have no faith for it, the day's coming when you will stop doing what you're trying. Triers never win. It's doers. Yes, come on. He didn't ever say, be ye triers of the word. No. He said, be ye doers of the word. You've got to be a doer of this word. You've got to know what this word says. This word is life. Life. It's life. It's life. See, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in, be in, then I begin to see this one. Philippians 2 Five and six. He said this, let this mind be in you. What mind is he talking about? The word. Let it be in you. Let it be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. How could it be in Christ Jesus? He's the word. He is the word. Now, I didn't get there today, this morning. I'm, you know, I, I don't know how further I can go with this. You, you know, you're about done with where I, well, what I've got to give, you know, I'm, we're, we're a long ways into this thing. But let me, let me show you something. The Bible says in, 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 in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was not form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
Then God said, okay, who's the God he's talking about? You ever thought about it? Well, go to, go to uh, let, me, let me show you. Then we'll now unhook right here until, until next week. Go to Colossians 1, 10 to 9. Colossians 1. Let's find out who is the creator of this world. Who is it? Colossians 1, 10 to 9. that you might be worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Keep rolling the tape, my son. Strengthen with all might, according to His glorious power, unto all patience, long-suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the, dark, from, from the power of darkness and translated us into the power of or the kingdom of his dear son. Keep going. In whom we have redemption, redeemed through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. There is no sin that I have not been forgiven from. Listen to me. Don't take this wrong. Before you were ever born, your sins were forgiven past, present, future. Listen to me. Past, present, future. If you don't believe it, the Bible says you've been forgiven from the foundation of the world. That's before you was even born. How can that be? Been forgiven. When were you healed? 2,000 years ago on the cross. It's laying there in the foundations of the word. And once I get into the Word of God and bring it to me, I can now put it in this body which houses the Spirit of God and the Spirit now can heal the body. Yes. It just begins to work out. Inside out. It just begins to work. Begin to work. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. See, we're talking about Jesus. Keep going. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things, what? Jesus. For by him were all things created. Jesus. For by him, Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven, that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. He, Jesus, how did he do that? How do you do that? Okay, let's come back to the New Testament. He'll tell us. Jesus said this. I never do anything until I hear my Father do it. Or say, I see Him do it. I never say anything until I hear my Father say it. That didn't start on this earth. That started way back in the beginning. The Father said, Son, it's time to create. The Father said it to the Son, and the Word voiced it. And when the word voiced it, it began to happen. Let there be, and it was. Let it be, and it was. The, the, the son said it. Now he's saying to you, let the word that's coming out of you be voiced out of you like it was out of me, and what you're saying will come to pass. you got to see this. I'm going to come back next week, and we're going to go on this again. you got to see it. Your words mean everything to God when they're hooked up to His Word. He heard the Word of the Father and He spoke them. If you'll hear the Word of the Father and speak them, the same results He got, you get. Same results. You're speaking the same Word. You know this. I have to speak His Word. I can't complain about anything. Through this whole thing, through this whole surgery and everything, I've tried to try to even be better than I am. When I'm hurting, begin to bless somebody else. The, the more I'm hurting, just begin to say something good to somebody else. When somebody comes in from the hospital, they come in some of the sometime, they come in, and I said, Thank you for coming in where I can see you. Because by seeing you it made my day a little bit better. And I look at you strong, and you're hurting. You're hurting. 
You should be cussing them out. Give me more medicine. Give me something. No. What I did, I gave them the blessing, and the blessing returns to me. And I knew that. So I kept doing it, and kept doing it, and I will continue doing it. I enjoy my wife, my woman. I enjoy her. I've get, I've, I've get the privilege of waiting on her for the last few days. Taking things to her in her chair. She don't have to get up and do anything, but take things to her that she loves. I go to the garden and I bring it in. Cut it up, take it to her. And in and and, and I can hear her in there humming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this stuff is off. This is really good. This is good stuff. What it, what is it? Come on. God gave her to me. Yes. He told me to love her. Yeah. I I've searched in the Bible. He never he never told her to love me. Right. I can't find it. <laughs> but the word but but here what I know this the yes. degree that I love her yes. is the degree she's going to love me back. Yes. Whatever I need, because in the middle of that whole surgery, I knew it. I've had to wake her up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and just because something's going wrong, to fix it, because I couldn't do it at the time. She had to get up and fix it. How come I can't take care of her now? I can get up. Be glad to get up and do this for you now. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, I know if, we, if, we, if Jesus doesn't come for another 50 years, we're going to have to say goodbye to one another on this earth. I know that. But I do know one thing. When I get to heaven, I'll never have to say goodbye again. Amen. Never. Never. And one thing that keeps coming to my mind, I long to see the Lord Jesus Christ fall before Him, thank Him personally for giving me the opportunity just to be a shepherd over you people here. You say, you don't have the largest church in the world. I could care less. I got the best people in the world. I got the best people in the world. And I know that. I know that. I have had nobody that's come in here that, that's in the service, listens to our singers, and go through a service and go away, said, some of the best singing I've heard in a long time. I can go to a church of 10,000. They don't sing that good. They can mouth the words, but there is no anointing in the words. They're, they're just given performance. They give you praise. Come on. There's a difference between praise and performance. Yes. That's what faith does. There's, when, when you're speaking faith, you know the difference. Yes. You know when faith comes up out of you. That you're not going to give up on this. I'm going to keep believing this. I will not stop. I will not cave it. I will not quit. This is my God in whom I can trust His words. I trust Him. When He said it, I trust Him. He said it, I trust Him. He spoke it, I trust Him. When you can get that far, then you know that you can trust. Then you won't back down. You won't cave in and you won't quit another time of your life. You'll believe Him. You'll stay with Him. But don't go above your faith. You stay there until you build your faith. Then take another step. Don't do it. Don't do it. You heard a pastor right here say that if you can't tithe without faith, don't do it. How come? Why? I don't want to see you hurt. We have enough faith people in here with tithing that's going to keep this thing going until you get your faith up. You hear me? You hear me? And if not, God will give me enough money to put in there. I believe it. I believe it. God's bringing in the wealth. He's going to bring it into the church. I went to the mailbox yesterday when I came down here last night. Picked out a letter. I thought, I wonder what this is from. Mailed to the church. I know the stamp on it. The stamp, it was stamped at New York, New York. So I don't know if it went there. It had to be go there to be stamped New York, New York, right? I guess. 
but it had some goofy prayer in there. <laughs> I want you now listen to what I want you to listen to this. The essence of the of the, the letter was this. I want you to pray for forgot the name. I don't know the name. They, they never gave their name, no revert, no name of who they were. Writing the letter, no nothing, nothing. So apparently they're ashamed of themselves. I don't know. But here was the essence of the letter. I want you to pray for this brother. He's been out of work for eight years. He can't find a job. Pray for him. But God have mercy upon him and give him a job. I said, you lazy sucker, you. If you can't find a job in eight years, there's something wrong with you, not God. You lazy, no good person. So here's how, I, here's how it came to me. If I got in my truck and I'm going to, going to Dallas-Fort Worth and I've been driving for eight years and haven't got there yet, you think I'm on the wrong road? You think I'm doing something wrong? If you haven't found a job in eight years, you are doing something wrong. Get on the right road. It's called faith. And don't forget believing. Believe. Believe. I got to close up, Brother Angel. I got to shut this thing down. I don't know how. Will you help me shut it down? I got too much of this. God's been talking to me about this too long. Amen. Amen. That's some good stuff there, y'all.